In this video, I'll be answering the question you see on the screen here from paper 33 from the year 2024 Cambridge A-level exams. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, there should be a link to a playlist in the description below. And if you're looking for a different paper, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, so take advantage of YouTube, pause, rewind, whatever helps you out. Uh, if you find this or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate a like, a subscribe, or even a share. In question two, we are asked to find the coordinates of the stationary point of this curve here. Now, whenever we hear stationary point, the first thing you should be thinking is dy dx. And in fact, dy dx being equal to zero at a stationary point. Um, oh yeah, we're also only interested in the domain x bigger than zero and less than pi over two. That'll only become important later on in the question. So how do we differentiate this? That's really what we're being asked. And we need to notice this is made up of two terms multiplying each other. So most likely we're gonna use the product rule. So let's try that. The product rule tells us to differentiate the first term and that's a e to the power two x. The derivative of that is e to the power two x multiplied by the derivative of this power. So that's multiplied by two. And then we leave the second term alone. This is back to the, being the product rule, sine two x. Then we add on, we leave this guy alone, e to the two x, and we multiply by the derivative of a sine. The derivative of sine is cosine two x, or cosine whatever's here, multiplied by the derivative of what's here. In this case, it is two. Let's uh, Let's put it in here, in a bracket. Okay, and we know all of this equals zero because it's a stationary point. So let's uh, try, and, um, try and expand things out of this. There's common terms in both, of the, in both of these terms. In all three, you can think zero has everything in it. So two e to the power of uh, two x goes into both of them. Two e to the power of two x goes into this one, sine two x times, and it goes into this one, cosine two x times. So this gives us two answers really. This gives us this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero. Let me deal with this guy first because there's a problem with that. This tells me two e to the power of two x equals zero and e to the two x is equal, divide both sides by two is equal to zero. There's a problem here. e to the power of something uh, looks like this. Um, goes up something like this. It approaches zero all the way down here. So if this equals zero, then that tells me that uh, 2x approaches minus infinity, or x approaches minus infinity. That's okay, that's a perfectly okay answer, uh, except we're, we're only dealing with this world. So we're not interested in anything less than zero, let alone minus infinity. So we'll, we'll ignore that answer. That answer can't be right in this case. So what, what could be zero? It must be this guy here. So uh, we'll go sine 2x um, plus cosine. 2x equals zero. How do we solve this? There's only one unknown, x, so we can solve this. Um, it's a fairly common equation to see. So it's, it's good to remember the, the technique for solving something like this, because lots of students get uh, stuck at this point. So how do we solve it? Let's uh, move one, one over one of the sides. It doesn't really matter, although it's better to leave sine. Um, well, I guess sine will be on one side no matter what you do. Uh, sine 2x is equal to minus cosine 2x. Now the trick at this point is to notice that if you divide both sides by cosine uh, 2x, this side will disappear, and this side will combine into one term we know. So if we divide both of them by cosine 2x, this becomes tangent 2x. And this becomes, uh, well I said disappear, but it turns into a minus one. This turns into tangent 2 of x is equal minus one. If we go ahead and solve this, take the inverse tangent of both sides. On the left side, it will destroy this tan. And on the right side, that will equal to the inverse tangent of minus one. Uh, you can go ahead and try and solve this. We're gonna have a problem at this point. I'll, I'll continue on before going back a moment. And uh, we would get two X is equal minus pi over four. X then would to equal minus pi over eight. It's a problem though, that's not the answer. Uh, that's not an, an answer that's acceptable to us because it's outside uh, the domain we're looking for. And um, so what happened there? Uh, 
this happens in all uh, trigonometric questions really these these things go on forever so i'm going to draw this one here because this is the tangent i don't want to have to deal with x yet i'll deal with 2x for now that looks like something like this at least um i'll go up like that continue down there um again here and again here something something like this hopefully you've seen a graphical representation of tan before uh, this would be around pi well around exactly pi this would be at 2 pi and um, the answer we're looking for uh, tangent of something equals minus one uh, let's just say minus one is down here and uh, minus one gives an answer here here and here we get loads of answers the calculator though at this point here is when we use the calculator the calculator only gave us this answer this line is not really correct. The, cr the truth up here should be infinite answers. So that's where we have to be careful solving any of these. So the real answer here is not only minus pi over four, it's this one here, this number um, here, this number here. So how do we get that? I like to think of it as this, uh, the distance between zero and pi over minus pi over four is pi over four. So the same gap is here. This is also pi over four away from pi. So pi minus this is uh, three over four pi. And uh, the same up here, this one would be um, uh, seven over four pi and, and so on on. And, and, this is, and again, also on the other side, there's millions of answers. So this isn't the only answer. Um, divide, the, divide them all by two, we get three over eight pi. We get seven over eight and this continues on forever at this point only at this point do I start well sometimes I think ahead but at this point I look at the world I was dealing with I was only dealing with x's bigger than zero and less than pi over two and like I said we couldn't accept this one as an answer that one was gone also we can't accept this one here it's too big it's over um, a half pi it's gone everything on the right has gone everything on the left we're only left with this as an answer here but we didn't just want the x number, we want the whole coordinates. Let me clean the board, make a little bit of room, and we'll find out what y is. So we know x is equal to 3 over 8 pi. y is written right up here, and y is equal to e to the power of 2 times uh, 3 over 8 pi, uh, multiplied by sine of 2 multiplied by 3 over 8 pi. We can clean a lot of this up. This is equal to uh, e to the power of three over four pi, sine of three over four pi. Put that into a calculator and we get the square root of two over two. I never really got why they write it this way though, uh, or the calculator or a lot of textbooks. I often, remember, square root of two goes into this square root of two times. So you'll also see it written as one over square root of two and then e to the three over four pi either way you want to write it is perfectly fine but uh, let's put them together into a coordinate form so we just have 3 over 8 pi and 1 over square root of 2 e to the power of 3 over 4 pi and that's the stationary point of this curve okay thank you for watching and have a great day